Um, right, we're going to talk about the championship, so if you have any comments or questions, like it is obviously from an Irish football context, maybe one of the main areas of interest for us, and so that's kind of the reason we're going to talk about it. Kicks off tonight, um, Luton Borough tonight, Kev, and yeah. like Robbie Keane's Middlesbrough. I will, that I, well, that's what we're going to be looking at, aren't we, as well? I mean, I think th th there's a, a different narrative around it as well, big story, Luton back in the championship. I think that's a, a decent story. I mean, you and I, when we would have been kids, I remember Luton when they were a first division yeah. club in the old first division before it became the Premier League. I remember, I remember those famous sides in the 80s playing on the AstroTurf pitch, David Pleats, real good attacking football that they played. So they're back now, Graham Jones as manager, ex-assistant um, manager, is that my phone there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, ex-assistant manager to, with Roberto Martinez at Everton and, and Belgium, so he's, he's in there at Luton. But the story of the night will be around Jonathan Woodgate. Jonathan Woodgate with, of course, Robbie Keane. Robbie Keane going there as assistant. So we'll, we'll be talking, I would imagine, across this season a lot about Middlesbrough. Interesting one, looking, I was having a little look around things as well this game. The last seven managers of Middlesbrough have lost their opening game. So right. let's see if that trend continues yeah. this evening as well. It's, I have had course to watch a lot of Middlesbrough's pre season via Robbie Keane's Instagram stories. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Did you see the interview that Robbie did in the, the mail in the last week? No. He did an interview. Um, you did an interview in the mail. It was very, <laughs> what was he, what was he very touchy, very, very touchy. Was yeah, it was Craig Hope, um, right. who covers the Irish. Yeah, it was. Uh, what, was he, what was he touchy about? Uh, he, he, but he was asked about um, what's he. Basically, he was asked about the the famous Christmas party from Spurs. Oh, yeah. If you look, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about yeah. McConch now. Then he was asked about um, what he did as a player. He was asked a. Tentative, tentatively asked about the World Cup in all two around the <laughs> right. And he just went, look, this, it, 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 very, very touchy. And if anyone gets it as well, you, you, if, you, if you Google it, mail online. I you're, wonder you're, how that went when he went, uh, hey, Robbie, could we have a great job? <laughs> yeah, sure, what do you want to talk about? Well, yeah. the trip to Gibney's no matter how, <laughs> we might touch on 2002. Yeah, it was, it was funny. And it, it, it jumps out of you when you're reading the interview as yeah. well, Robbie, Robbie's tetchiness throughout as yeah. well. Like, no, talking about it, it's rubbish, bollocks. Have you yeah. not? So, yeah, it was, it's quite interesting. But I, I mean, I was saying before, I think, certainly for Woodgate himself, I think there's a lot of pressure on Woodgate. He's been coaching around Middlesbrough for, for a good while now. The appointment of Robbie Keane certainly has had us all alerted here now to see how he goes, see how this team goes on there at Middlesbrough. Um, what sort of, I mean, any indication as to what sort of style of football we might be able to see from them? Or what do you, I mean, is it a... The indications are... The <laughs> In inverted commas, we're going to play good football, good attacking football, so we'll see how, we, again, we're going to gauge, I think the Championship, because they have so many games in the first six or seven weeks of the season, you, yeah. you're playing ten games over the first six or six, seven weeks, so we're going to get almost, well, nearly a quarter of the season done by the end of, what you're saying, certainly mid-October, end of September, so we're going to get a good gauge of to how this season's going to go, so I'll be watching Middlesbrough, certainly going to watch this game tonight as well to see how they get on and see... Um, see what, as you say, what sort of football they're going to be playing, how... I'm, I'm, I'm always wary about the opening gate day of the season. I, mean, I said before, we're looking ahead for the Community Shield this weekend. Yeah. Liverpool not had a great pre-season. I don't think it's a massive gauge through pre-season, but you do get maybe the mentality built through that stage. And mm -hmm. if, if the results haven't been going quite well, again, within that piece that Robbie was talking there, there was a t he did touch on how the team was progressing. The indication is that the team have been taken on board what what both he and Woodgate have been mm -hmm. trying to get across them, so yeah. it'll be well, interesting. It'll be interesting because it's, it, is, it ticks the box of that trend, uh, re that recent trend of getting young managers with not much experience into decent, so like Middlesbrough is a decent, it's a decent gig, it's a big-ish club, yeah. and um, it will be... Well, there's a, there's a, I, mean, I, I, don't know, I don't know what patience will be there for it, is what I'm saying, after five, ten games in, if results aren't going their way, I'm not sure what patience will be there for it. I think there's less, there's less scope for... Um, for, for allowing a manager to, to develop even the championship mm -hmm. now I think I think it is down under a year I think it's 11 months I think the, um, the average, isn't it? average reign of, of a manager She's there as well line, but yeah. I mean, it's interesting talking the managers there as well because there's a lot of big names there's a, one of the, out of the five talking points that you're looking at certainly the managers is one of them the, the, the big names that's in the championship Marcelo Bielsa just in terms of obviously in at Leeds well, I'll talk a little bit more in depth more around Leeds in a sec though but I think he's the first manager since Simon Grayson to go back to back manager at the start of the season for Leeds. Is he really? Which was 09, I think it was. Wow. So the last 10 years at Leeds, it's been a continuation, a merry go round for them. Manager comes in, goals. Oh, yeah. And that, that's going to be interesting to see what Bielsa does now this season as well. But across the championship, yes, there are 
uh, Bielsa that's in there as well, big name. Slavin Bilic, of course, now he's another one as well. Let's see how he gets in at West Brom. Mm. Bit of pressure on him after the way things went initially with West Ham. Turned a bit sour for him. Now he's trying to get his career back on track, I suppose, here as well now as well. The old guard in Warnock in there, but the new managers, Philip Koku, uh, he's in at Derby County. Shea, of course, still. Shea Given's still in there in Derby as well. Scott Parker, another manager who's now looking to establish himself, took it temporarily, the Fulham job at the end of last season yeah. when they got relegated. Lee Boyer, Charlton. That's the only experience he has, is it, Scott Parker? He was yeah, that's, there the, for a while that's the only experience he has. Right. So I think there's a lot of big names, and I, I mentioned the one, John O'Shea, John O'Shea assistant manager to, to Jose Gomez there at Reading as well. Let's see how he, he gets on I could us. see John O'Shea quietly squirreling away a career of about 30 years almost never is he is he like is he a, is he an outright manager material I'd say eventually yeah you I would do. Yeah. yeah I do, I do. I, it, who's to say who, who, who is but I, I think John knowing John very very wise head and him wise head on, on, on his young shoulders young coaching shoulders anyway I think what he'll do I think he'll sit in the background for a while I don't necessarily see him you know like Frank Lampard immediately stepped into Derby last yeah. season, now he's got the big job at Chelsea and there's a number of coaches that have done that. I think he'll be a little bit on, a, on, on the low profile, I think he'll listen, I think he'll learn. I think we'll probably see John in two or three years time where he'll still be in that assistant capacity or the coaching capacity around the club, wanting to build that reputation first before he would take that top yeah. job. But John, I said very wise head, he's, he's a brilliant man in terms of I think he's. We, we have a perception of John where he's, you know, very open, very, very honest. I think at times, but he's a he's a he's a hardy hardy man. He's a he's, 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 a, he's a character. He, he is a character. Is one of the most inscrutable interviewees that I've ever had the pleasure to chat to. Like, In what way? Go on. Never give you anything. Yeah, exactly. Shrewd, shrewd yeah. cookie, yeah. shrewd cookie. He is. He's he's got a great persona, great fella, and I think. Is he a different that, person when away, I presume he is away from the microphones. He's just he's he's, he's just a sound fella. Yeah. Good lad, really good. Someone you someone you know that you could rely on. Yeah. Definitely someone you, who you know for well that you could rely on. And that's why I think I think he'll take to coaching brilliantly. I think he'll go on and have a, a very good career for himself. But I think he'll do it in a way that I said you know I'll be close to, to Lee Carsley. Lee Carsley's now been coaching for be around about ten years now, Lee, maybe. But he's never He's, although he's had a couple of caretaker jobs, he's constantly wanting to stay in the background, learn the trade. And if you look at someone like Chris Hewton, who's done it that way, Chris, yeah. he was coaching at Tottenham for years and years. Looked like he was going to be forever the eternal assistant manager. Exactly. And then he was almost forced into it at Newcastle yeah. when he got the job. He went up to Newcastle as, as assistant in the coaching capacity. And then, I don't know who was manager, was it Keegan, I think, that left around that it time? Been, yeah. And then he was, there was it's nobody else. There was no. in Ireland, obviously, as well. Yeah, we had him with Brian yeah. there as well. And then. He got the top job and he's done a great job wherever he's been, at Norwich, at Birmingham, at um, Brighton, of course. So um, I think John would, I'm not saying he will do, but I think knowing John, I think he'd probably take that little bit of a, a back seat and listen, learn for a number of years before deciding to take that top job. Yeah, uh, he's not Neil Warnock is what you're saying. No, no, no. I was actually, I was actually seeing a piece on Warnock yesterday. It was on Sky. I was seeing Sky Sports News yesterday. And 40 years in the game now. He's 70 now, Warnock. And yeah. he's been 40 years in management. It's, I've played against his teams over the years. And some of his shouts that were, when you'd hear, I was obviously close to the touchline when I always remember one when he was at Berry, And his shouts were ridiculous. He used to wind up opposition benches with the stuff that used to come out. Oh, was it, well, like what? Well, um, what, anything repeatable? Well, no, just stuff. Well, he, he did. He used to shout out on the sideline. He used to have a lad in midfield for Berry. He'd go, do him, break his leg, break his leg. And you'd be like... Who'd be saying that? Yeah, break his leg. That was... that was Literally? Yeah, break his leg, yeah. And, and that's, not, that's not on. You'd hear that shout from him. Not and from a manager. Obviously, he'd wind the opposition bench. He's like, what are you saying there? Jesus Christ, a bit of yeah. respect and things like this. Yeah. And, and was he... Would, like, would his players understand that uh, he doesn't mean that he's just trying to wind everybody up? Yeah, or would they be like, maybe a bit of that. Geez, I better do a bit of There's a, not many players that I've seen playing the Warnock or that I would know that have played in the Warnock that dislike him. Right. He has a real good rapport with his players yeah. and that maybe goes against what m maybe the, the, the common theme of him. I don't know if you saw that. Did you ever see that documentary that he did at Sheffield United? Oh, the one with the Raven. Yeah, you get oh, it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. But the lads... Oh, yeah. Like, how did those players... Those players have not reflected well, I think they laughed. Like, I think they just laughed they? at it. They just kind of laughed it off and he, like, he's at it again. Yeah. And well, I, I think... I. I mean, I don't know, clearly, but I felt that he knew the camera was over his shoulder and he was giving it shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't yeah. sure that was a typical uh, halftime team talk.
No, I, I don't think it's, I don't think that was the case. But it was it was a little insight into him. Anyone to see the, to see how he how he addresses his team. Right, um, we've five talking points here. So uh, Luton Bird tonight, we've done uh, the managers, we've done yeah. uh, Leeds. We want to talk about I think, uh, again, Fav- favourites to get promoted. Leeds, Leeds are favourites. Yeah, uh, Bielsa, of course, is the big draw for them. Um, now, it was actually it was out there. Tommy put it to me before as well. There's, there was a piece in the in on Mail Online over the last couple of days as well in the Mail around the system that he's going to be using when his manager is Chile. And you, you've probably seen Chile in the World Cup in. 2014, that that really good Chile side when Sanchez was flying and mm. how they used to, how they played played a three three one three system, right. um, really open and attacking. If you remember, I, I can't remember the name. The lad that played at Cardiff for centre half, he played centre half. He was about five foot four, n- not who you would naturally think is going to be a centre half, but they just used to go man for man. So everything was almost man for man all over the pitch, really open, mm. but. The way that they press teams, they stop sides coming against them. If you've seen Leeds last season, Leeds last season went with the back four across most of the season, as far as I saw them anyway. Changed and tinkered maybe in game, but so open edge and like the way that they played, like so they pressed so high, leaving himself two on two at the back. Liam Cooper is a lad that I would have played with at, uh, at, at Hull. He's the captain there at Leeds. No real pace, Liam. Brilliant left foot, great delivery, mm-hmm. very dominating in the air. You're old fashioned. Ta- style centre half really put a ball up he would he- go straight through it head everything but leaving him exposed one on one wouldn't be his forte right. that's what Bielsa does Bielsa plays like that it's that's it yeah we're getting a little thing on the on the three one three three essentially how 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 he would go about it and it, it kind of tinkers as well where he would he drop the two the two advanced midfielders that's yeah. playing in the more advanced three coming back in to play the three right. so three three and you're almost playing with a ten so you've got a ten who's key to the system attacking wise mm. your two wide men have got flexibility where not much weight on that though is there I mean maybe the wing backs but well you're looking at wing backs where are your wing backs your wing backs are your outside two centre halves mm. he, he leaves it so exposed defensively where you've just got said to you one on one defensively so most sides in the championship play like Premier League sides one up front mm. one off He's leaving it with a, a one-on-one defensively, so you can imagine there'll be a lot of goals scored for Leeds, but you would imagine as well seeing them, there'll the be a lot, right of, a lot of goals conceded. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how their goal leads this season. Are they going to be able to handle the pressure that's on them as the favourites? They open up on Sunday away to Bristol City, who were amongst the front runners as well. There's a bit of money that's gone into Bristol City yeah. this season, so it'd be interesting to see how they start, how they're going to go about it, are they going to be able to handle that pressure? Something that Keith Andrews, and I'll talk about one of the talking points really, the Sky coverage. I think Sky do a great coverage. Keith Andrews. He, he, was, he was an excellent pundit. We, we of course had him in with us. He's, he's left us now. He's walked away to pastures new, Adrian. But Keith spoke all, all last season, and he looked at, at Bielsa's sides and and how when he was coaching in Spain, wherever he's coached, the fall away at the end of the season. Watching Leeds last season, they kind of they didn't really t- um, tinker with the squ- with the, with the starting eleven. It was the majority of the time you turn up, you know what starting eleven leads. The the high intensity that Leeds play at. And Keith touched on it. He said, "How can they maintain that the way that they play till the back end of the season?" And I'm not saying that was the reason why they did, but they did fall away quite badly at the end of the season. They had a, a, a points cushion at one stage, it, and it just caught up with them. They went, in, they fell into the playoffs the last came couple of weeks of the yeah. season, and came a cropper to Villa when they, uh, sorry, to Derby when they yeah. beat them in the playoffs. So um, that's going to be interesting to see again. Couple How are they going to? A couple of like uh, shrewd little bits of business. The Loneys, obviously from City and Spurs. They've Helder Costa from Wolves. And Helder Costa's the one. He, he he did brilliant for Wolves as a Championship player. It's not quite happened for him in the Premier League. So that's a big signing for them. Yeah, yeah. I signed a couple from Barcelona. A couple of uh, free transfers from Barca gone in there as well. I'm genuinely not attending this question as a should we pick him for Ireland. But like Patrick Bamford will be one of the top scorers in the championship this season most likely if everything goes yeah. according to plan like a, a decent massive, season. massive player for them and if he's banging in goals left right and centre and I know that um, he's not certainly not banging our door down to get involved but yeah. I mean the calls will probably increase at that point but he'll be a very important player for Leeds this season and could end up in one of the top scorers in the division yeah I mean I think again you move on for, say, from Leeds as well but in relation to Patrick Bamford but I think We've got a nucleus of, of of our Irish players that are playing the championship. So there are a lot of teams, of course, Preston, Stoke, and you know a lot of the teams that have that, that have that have got Irish players within them. So we'll be watching the championship as a whole in relation to Bamford. I mean, I, personally, he's given the indication he doesn't want to play for Ireland. He's not Irish, so I wouldn't pick him. But that's that's the, that's a different matter altogether. 
but there's there's a, a nucleus of players that are playing championship football now that we're going to have to be watching. I, I like the Sky coverage. I think Sky Sky do a great job. Certainly the Friday night games. There's, there's a change of season. I think to the format. Um, I think it's going to be there'll be certain games on Friday, but they're now back doing the the twelve thirty kick off the Premier League game Sky. Right. So now they're going to put the five thirty kick off on a Saturday to compete with the BT game. Right. So that'll be an interesting one as well. I mean, seeing but I'll, I'll be watching the Championship a lot this season. Obviously watching Preston, see how they get on. Sean Maguire, yeah. Alan Brown there as well. See how they get on with it. But David uh, Nugent. Yeah, I mean, Dave Nugent returning. It was forty-seven-year-old David Nugent. Ah, oh, it was a funny one with, with I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the, the, the how the deal that they've gone about, but they let Callum Robinson go, which reportedly it's an undisclosed fee, but it's around about six million, I think. We've right. let him go to Sheffield United, and Preston are a selling club. Is the way that it's been with them. They let Nugent go years ago. He went for he went for big money, and he's he's done great, but. You let Callum Robinson go. That's got real pace. He's had to play up front on his own for for, for Preston, and then you bring in Nugent. It's not necessarily one that's going to get hold of the fans in in relation to you're letting your main player go and <laughs> you're signing Nugent. But he's he's done great. He knows the club. Preston's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a struggle for Preston again this year. Staying up is the is the is priority, right, yeah. and there's no real investment that's gone into the side. So it's uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. The fifth talking point on the list that we wanted to touch on before we get stuck into some of the Premier League transfers was obviously the Irish interest around and about the grounds. One of the most inter interesting one for me is obviously Conor Masterson at uh, QPR. Yeah. He's given up his uh, Liverpool uh, dream that had sort of run out, and he's gone on a free there. Um, Obviously, a guy who's had a front row seat for some major, major games in Europe and domestically as well from a Liverpool point of view. But yeah. 20, I think, is obviously uber keen. It was a point that you touched on earlier on about sh and, and in relation to Liverpool. Should I go there and sit at the bench or actually should I go out and try and get some football? And he's yeah. obviously made the exact same call. But it's a, it, yeah, it's a bit, different, a, bit, a bit different for him because he's gone over at 16, hasn't he? 17, he's gone over as a young man. And the real th this is the reality you go to the big clubs now financially it's more lucrative for you you're getting your education in terms of the football and education you're around brilliant footballers he's learned a lot i would imagine from klopp and and and, and what he's probably given to him personally but the reality is he's not going to go and play 20 50 games to liverpool mm -hmm. it's about the next move this is a key move from now we've we've heard so much of him we've not seen a lot of him certainly playing in the competitive environment and now he's got to go and play games and got to go and prove himself so we all wish him well and I think it's a, it's a great move for him I think it's a really good move for him I said before there's a lot of Irish interest if if he plays 10 games in the first what 10 12 weeks of the season he's going to be considered for the Irish squad so it's going to put him on a different level immediately straight away he's going to be watched and I'm interested to see how this goes, yeah. Goes, interested yeah. to see how it goes. Keith speaks well of him. Keith said very... Keith Andrews, yeah. uh, who's of course assistant manager now, Stephen Kennedy, 21, speaks very well. Um, grounded boy, very, very good, good player. That's the most important thing, I suppose. And Keith thinks he's got a chance. Yeah, there's a nice little level of talent bubbling under there. Uh, Stephen Ward has gone to Stoke. Obviously, James McLean is there. And um, yeah. I, again, who knows what their ambitions are. They're not particularly lofty ambitions, I don't think, this season. But well, I don't know. I mean, it's again, they've still got the parachute payment that's there. They, they dropped down. Their budget would have been extremely high last season. Mm. So they would have expected to be at the minimum top six last year. So that's where, they're, where they are again. Is it Nathan... Uh, Jones, his manager, went in from Luton. Uh, so he's now up to him to establish himself now in the Championship. It's a big, big, big one for him. Gary Rowett went last season after they got him. They recruited him from Derby last year. So, um, so from Birmingham, should I say? So it's an interesting. It's an, this is going to be an interesting one, Adrian. See, see what's going to happen there at Stoke because James McLean, I, I believe, as well pre-season, been playing a bit at left back as well. So he's a direct competition with Stephen Ward. What's he? What is that going to be a position that they see him? progressing with and is he going to play the yeah. long term I don't know but there's a lot of pressure on Stoke a lot a lot of pressure on Stoke as we all know Kev players who like you're into the you're fading your career at that point aren't you when you you're make saying, that step back it's just like you knock out four or five years just playing average you're football ruling, you're ruling James McLean out now that's it his career's gone <laughs> no, now he's on the way there's evidence there is previous it? players is have it? Yeah, made not, similar moves I've, I don't know I've never you haven't mentioned Fulham at all I know we have to move off pretty, pretty quickly to get into some of the transfers but obviously one of the teams that are in with a <coughs> big shot as well they've made a couple of signings Knockhart's gone in. Alexander Mitrovic is one of the short odds, I think, favourites to be the player of the uh, yeah. player of the year. There, They're well, looking shot. looking what he did when he got promoted season before last, he was outstanding. They signed him from Newcastle on loan in the season, and they paid was it twenty million for him. The, the money that they've paid last year was it hundred million that they signed. Uh, sorry, that they paid for for the for the players last summer. 
a lot of those should have an impact in the championship. Scott Parker as well, um, they're expected to bounce back. They'll be yeah. one of the favourites. There, there's a lot, as I said, a lot of stories. Philip Cocker as well at Derby. What are Derby going to do this season as well? But there's a lot of there's a lot of interest in this in the league this season, more so than ever. I think, even though it's you know it's it's, it's certainly a league that I've taken a massive interest in over the years and yourself as well. But it's. It's a, it's a big one this year. It's a massive one with the big names that's in there. Well, it's a topic we will be coming back to with great regularity given the Irish interest that is in it. But that's our tee up for the uh, five talking points for the uh, championship for the season ahead.